Hello, I'm Dave with One Adventure at a Time. Today we want to share with you how we built our bed, how it was easy, quick, and affordable. So come inside and take a look. So putting the bed in is one of the first things you want to consider when you're back here building your van. Because if you try to do it after you have the walls already in, it's going to be real hard to get the nuts on in the back of these bolts. So it's so you want to think about how much headroom you're going to need in the van and how much storage you're going to need down below. And once you got to figure it out what height you're going to go with, then you can go ahead and install this L bracket right away. So this angle bracket. And you can see here the uh, tie down strap. These actually came with the van already in it. And all I, this is the spot where it was at. So this one was already threaded. All I had to do was put that one right back in where it was. And then these ones here, because the walls weren't in yet, I was able to reach my hand back behind the support beam and hold that nut until I got this bolt in. So as part of your first step of figuring out where you want your bed, and then you're pretty much set to go ahead and put the railing in. Now this piece was given to us but I did see that they do sell it at Home Depot and I did buy a piece that is 14 gauge and it's the slotted zinc coated material so you can get it at Home Depot I know that for sure and this here might be a little thicker I think it might be overkill it's probably 10 gauge or less and it's I ran it along the natural support beam that comes with the van and I didn't have to drill any holes because there's already holes in that support beam. So I was able to get my fingers behind it with the nut, hold the nut, and then tighten it in against the wall. And what's nice about the angle iron is that if you prefer your bed to be higher, maybe you're going to store a mountain bike or something underneath your bed and you need more clearance, you can still use that support beam and turn the angle iron the other direction and have it be like this. So we, that's what we did. We ran one down each wall. And then our next step was we took an old futon mattress frame. And this old futon frame measures 72 and 3 quarters inches. We completely stripped it down and took it apart. And then it sets perfectly on this angle iron from one side to the other. And we'll show you that. All right, what I like about the futon frame is it's extremely lightweight. And it's slotted, so your mattress is going to breathe. It's not going to trap moisture in it. And if you can see how this fits right on top perfectly on both sides. And it's naturally strong with all its support beams. <laughs> all right so here now because this angle iron slotted i'm just going to run the same bolts that came with this futon frame and run them straight through and into the angle iron and we've got two here and two here and the same on the other side so I'm gonna run four bolts in and tighten them up and that's, it'll be ready to go. Now we did go with that eight inch mattress on top of this. So if you are putting a mattress on this, you can actually use the futon mattress that came that was with this frame. We tried that, we didn't really like that mattress, but it did fit perfectly. So we ended up using our old Tempur-Pedic mattress. We cut it to fit and then that's, it sits about eight inches higher. And we wanted enough headroom to where we could sit up. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. Okay, so just to consider again that you might want to flip that angle iron up to gain yourself a couple extra inches. 
So, but you have to consider, you know, do you need the storage below or do you need the headroom above? And then you also have your distance that your mattress is going to set above that slot where you have your angle iron. And then above that, you have to think, are you going to have a cabinet? So if you're going to have a cabinet, how far is the cabinet going to be away from the mattress? Are you going to hit your head on that? So just a lot of things to keep in mind at the level that you want your bed to be at. One last thing to consider is which side you're going to put your head on because you're going to have to know which side, if you're going to have cabinets, how high they're going to be with your head so you don't hit your head on them. And if you're going to be stealth camping or not, because if you're stealth camping, you might think that you want your head on the driver's side because that's generally the high side on the street. But we've been talking to some EMTs and they say you want your head on the passenger side and it totally makes sense too because if you do get hit by a car, it's going to hit that driver's side. So when I'm sitting on the bed here, I got plenty of head height here left before the ceiling. And our cabinets are just about right. We made this one here on the head side, we made this one a lot narrower. And then the one on the foot where we put our feet is quite a bit wider. So if I try to sleep with my head on the driver's side over here on this side, um, I'll constantly hit my head on something. So you either want your cabinet on your head side to be narrower or at least a little bit higher up than the other side. And so what, 29 inches on the frame? We're at about 38 inches here with all the bedding and it's pretty comfortable. But you know, with that, the cabinets were a little bit higher. We could have raised up the bed just a little bit and had more storage. So, cause I do have several inches to spare. So I hope you like these kind of videos. If so, please hit the like button and give us a comment. Let us know what you think and please subscribe. Thank you for watching.